Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Aaron Porras. And I'm Natasha Kirchuk. Coming up in today's newscast, we'll take a look at the events of the last decade in Israel that have brought us to this new year. We'll also reveal the insane surprise that an Israeli family received in their Amazon package. And it's time to start planning your next vacation to Israel because we have the rundown on the top secret destinations you just can't miss out on. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2020, Aaron. It sure is. And as we begin a new decade, it's also a good time to take a look back at the last 10 years as a reminder of what we can work on and look forward to in the future. So here's a short recap of the biggest headlines in Israel over the last decade. officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Israel is the winner of Eurovision Song Contest 2018. The winner is Israel! It's been an amazing 10 years, but moving on, while most people celebrated New Year's with fireworks and parties, rioting forces in Iraq were setting fire to the United States Embassy. The tit-for-tat between United States interests and Iranian-backed proxies in Iraq have taken a stark turn at the start of the decade. Pro-Iran militia have attacked and breached the United States Embassy compound in Baghdad, the riots follow United States airstrikes against Iran-backed Hezbollah targets, who the United States holds responsible for killing a U.S. civilian contractor days before in a rocket attack. But perhaps as feared by critics, the American retaliation has only prodded Iran rather than keep it at bay. While well, the compound has since been secured, and President Trump thanked Iraqi leaders for their rapid response. But he's also now diverted at least 750 U.S. forces from Kuwait to Iraq. And Trump is now again warning Iran against further action, saying a battle would be a bad idea for them to start. I don't think that would be a good idea for Iran. It wouldn't last very long. Do I want to? No. I want to have peace. I like peace. And. Iran should want peace more than anybody. So I don't see that happening. No, I don't think Iran would want that to happen. It would go very quickly. Meanwhile, Israeli military chiefs have been watching these events unfold closely. Any potential conflict with Tehran 
could develop into a wider scale war that may spill over into Israeli territory. Now, as for Israeli politics, it looks like Prime Minister Netanyahu's first order of business in the new year will be to replace himself as chief in three different ministries. Until very recently, Prime Minister Netanyahu has served not only as the leader of the country, but as the chief of five additional separate ministries. Well, in a bid to lighten the load, earlier in 2019, Netanyahu first appointed Likud MK Israel Katz to take over as foreign affairs minister. But now, with criminal indictments looming overhead, he's required to resign from his other four portfolios. So on Sunday, the cabinet approved the promotion of United Torah Judaism's Yaakov Litzman to health minister, and Netanyahu is expected to present three new ministry appointments today. One name each for the Welfare Ministry, the Agriculture Ministry, and the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs. As for the Prime Minister position, there is no law that prevents the head of state from stepping down while under indictments, or from staying uh, in office while indictments. And just to be sure of his standing, Netanyahu has now officially requested Knesset immunity as well. But with the Knesset dissolved and elections scheduled for March, Netanyahu's request will go unanswered for months, delaying any potential for trial anyway. In other news, it looks like the financial collapse in the Palestinian Authority is about to get a little harsher because over 100 Palestinian NGOs are now forfeiting their foreign funding by refusing to promise to keep that money away from the hands of terrorists. Israel is withholding millions in tax returns over the, pay, the PA's pay-for-slay laws, and now the United States is withholding aid for the same reason, and many other countries have pressured Ramallah to give up support for terrorist activities. But pro-Palestinian NGOs still haven't gotten the message and they're now rejecting funds provided by the EU in protest. In fact, according to reports, at least 100 NGOs and Palestinian civil society organizations are giving up on their aid budgets after the European Union insisted that their money did not go to terrorist groups. The NGOs apparently even insisted that the groups in question were just political parties, while also demanding to include stipulations that reject the EU's criteria. But following several detailed reports exposing the ties to terrorist groups, the international community is better positioned to hold firm. Meanwhile, the PA is falling deeper and deeper into an economic collapse. And the Palestinian Authority Prime Minister is calling attention to this issue again just days ago. In this decision, it means that the funds will be able to get to 650 million shekels, which will lead us to a new government of the new government. All right, now we know we said that New Year's resolutions can be a slippery slope, but for anyone whose resolution is to eat healthier in 2020, a new Israeli campaign is here to help. Starting January 1st of the new year, Israeli supermarket shoppers will benefit from an all-new labeling campaign aimed at helping consumers improve their diet. Despite a fairly healthy food culture, Israelis have started to suffer from a growing rate of obesity due to more and more processed sugary foods. And the health ministry began to look at ways to address this trend several years ago, leading the way to this initiative. So now, foods with over 500 milligrams of sodium, 13 and a half grams of sugar, or over 5 grams of saturated fat per 100 grams in a serving will need to be labeled with a new red label. And conversely, healthier foods like vegetables, milk, eggs, and fruit will be given a green sticker. But then the only question that remains is, will this matter? Well, there's only one way to find out, and a good way to start is with a more informed public. In related news, what are the food trends that brought us through the last decade? And how are they likely to change in the coming year? Well, here with some answers is Israel's number one food stylist, expert, and blogger, Diana Lindel. Thank you so much for being with us. So hey. what are some of the trends that we're going to look for? Okay, well, let's start off with 2018 was a really, really hard year for restaurants. A lot of restaurants closed. So mm -hmm. in 2019, we saw kind of like an alternative um, to chefs opening up restaurants, opening up food establishments that aren't necessarily restaurants. Right. So we're talking about delicatessens, we're talking about hamburger joints. So there's a really famous chef in Israel, his name is Omer Miller, and he opened up a hamburger joint called Susu and Sons, and now he has 11 mm. branches all over Israel, not right. only in Tel Aviv. Um, Pop-ups are really popular now because it's you know really hard to open up a restaurant when you're not sure what the fate of the restaurant's gonna be, so yeah. we have you know pop-ups going on. So that we're talking a lot of street food, basically, kind of you know, you, you go, you pick up something quickly, and you head out. Exactly. Is, is getting into the food market prohibitive in, in, to some degree? Because you mentioned, like, pop-ups are kind of the way to go. 
Um, I think that it's a way to test the waters out before mm. you're going to invest right. a lot of money in opening up a restaurant. And it's sure. pretty risky, the restaurant business in Israel in general. Well, you see a lot of people opening up these stands in the shuk and the marketplaces right. here as yeah. kind of a, you right. know, beforehand. Which but, are so good. All right, what else? Yeah. Tell us what else Next is a trend one. that's We're happening. We're talking about um, the Israeli cuisine being heavily influenced by Arab cuisine. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're talking about a raya, so it's, um, which is a, like a pita. I was just saying. Oh, a rais, I yeah. love this. Yeah, super good. So it's a crispy pita filled. It's a pita filled with um, raw meat, cooked on charcoals, making it super crispy on the edge, really moist and 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 tasty on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and it comes from Levantine cuisine. Another thing we see is um, knafe, which mm -hmm. is something that came from the from from the Arab cuisine. And I think one of the reasons why we're seeing this now is because of the global food trend, which is having things being locally sourced. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we go around seeing in Israel what's locally sourced here, we're finding a lot of the things that are yeah. um, are authentic to the, the yeah. Well, cuisine. and knafe and um, arayis are two things that I am so, absolutely obsessed with. Okay, so we're running low on time. Okay. But what is the ingredient one. of the year? Ingredient of the year is definitely the yogurt stone. What is the yogurt stone? Yeah, Actually, comes yogurt from stone? the Arab cuisine. It's a ball that's made out of dried yogurt. Mm. And where in the Arab cuisine, it's usually made um, for, as a base for yogurt sauces. The chefs in Israel are doing it like uh, a local Parmesan. So they're grating it on salads and on oh. pizza and pasta, fish. And it's kind of like the Israeli umami now. Interesting. I actually have not seen that, so I'm going to be looking Watch for, out that for that in 2020. Yeah. Totally All right, thank in. you so much for joining thank us. Thank you nice so to much. See you guys. All right, now, have you ever wished that you could wake up to discover that someone has just gifted you a million dollars? How about 15 million dollars? Well, that's exactly what has happened to an Israeli hospital. 50 million shekels. That's what a 94-year-old Israeli man has just donated to the Ichilov Hospital in Tel Aviv, a mere week after passing away. So who is this mysterious multimillionaire? Well, his name is Daniel Jacobson, and his family made up some of Israel's original pioneers. In fact, they were the first settlers and founders of the Israeli cities of Rehovot and Rishon LeZion. Despite Jacobson's wealth, his neighbors say he has always led a modest life. Well, his hefty donation certainly isn't modest, and it will help fund 10 new operating rooms in the Ichilov Hospital, hopefully changing the lives of the patients to come. Speaking of an amazing surprise gift, dozens of Israeli children suffering from cancer have just now completed a trip of a lifetime. And ILTV's Nitni Manson has the story. For the past 20 years, the Zichon Menachem Foundation of Israel has been treating pediatric cancer patients with an annual winter camp event. But this year, the organization stepped up its game, taking over 150 kids on a trip to the island nation of Cyprus. The five-day vacation included dune buggies, go-karting, bowling, off-road trips, amusement parks, and more. And all with the help of the Blue Lagoon Hotel, which aided in putting the trip together. And their trip seems to have had its intended effect, because organizers say they're sure the kids returned with renewed strength to deal with their illnesses. Now, since 1990, the Zichon Menachem organization has run over 80 similar camp programs, servicing nearly 10,000 young people. And you too can help them with their mission of bringing joy and support to child patients with cancer by visiting www.zichon.org. All right, now many people have talents that they hope will become a successful business, but while it's scary to take that first step, listening to our next guest might be the final push that you need. So. Please welcome founder of Levido Beauty Care Products, Ido Magal. All right, so I'm very excited to hear about the yeah. crazy story uh, <laughs> behind the creations that you have in front of you. Tell us, tell us about this. Uh, 17 years ago, I was a student for herbal medicine and chemistry of essential oils, and um, I had a nephew that was just born, mm -hmm. uh, and my sister-in-law, she is an artist, so she will tell you, create something, don't buy nothing. Right. And I said, hmm, what can I actually do? And I said, I'll, I'll make him something special. And I cooked a diaper cream in my kitchen. I gave it to her, and she called me a few weeks later. She said, Ido, listen, he had a diaper rush, and I used this cream that you gave me, and it worked like magic. After a few hours, it was gone. 
And she asked for another one. And then her sister called and said, I've heard what you gave to my sister. <laughs> and then friends of her sister, and then friends of friends, and then friends of friends of friends. Yeah, word of so mouth, that, that is recipe. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I save that. I still have it on a, on, a, on a small piece of paper at my home. And it's also the product that you have right here in front of you Until right now. Until today, yeah. And it's become world famous, right? Yeah, I mean, God. not only are people crazy about Levido products and, and this specific product in general, but I, there are celebrities as well, I heard, that are now using Levido. Yeah, in the last, uh, since 2015, we started to work in the international market and we were very lucky and uh, we got one day a phone call from uh, Goop's buyer. Goop's is a company that's owned by yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow, Paltrow yeah. yeah, that her uh, makeup artist, and the story was like just like that. Her makeup artist walked into one of our stores in Ercelia, uh -huh. and she she bought it just to use it in her kit. And then she started to use it uh, uh, on Gwyneth when she was doing some of her makeup. And then Gwyneth said, "I want to have this bottle." And we have Hebrew on the bottle, so it right. was like it was the connection with Israel in a second. And sure. and in a, and after a few months, she finished the bottle and she gave it to her buyer, and the buyer said. We got this bottle, empty bottle from Gwyneth, and she asked us to bring you on board. And since then, for the last four so years, we're with them with a big assortment of products, and it wow. gives us a strong push in the North American market. Wow, awesome. which is, uh, yeah, and I mean, I know a lot of people who use Levido. I think I just heard somebody in the control room saying they use Levido products sure. as well. So tell us what you have right here, just so we can get a sense of some of the products that you offer. And what I should be taking home. So, <laughs> so first of all, we'll start with our hero. This is our replenishing facial serum. This is a blend of 19 different plants. I always like to smell it because I always fall in love again and again every time that I smell it. And this is all natural? It's all natural. So it's 100% natural ingredients. These are like press. essential oils, essentially? It, it's cold press oils. It's CO2 extractions. It's wow. vegan. It's gluten-free. It's certified wonderful. organic ingredients. Oh, but wow. the That's most important good. thing with Levido, it's not just because, you know, we don't, we don't convince people to use our products beca just because they're not or just because they're gluten-free and just because they are vegan, which they are all of those they are, mm -hmm. but we also do clinical studies to prove the efficacy of the products, which is extremely important because okay. natural is, is better for you, it's better for the environment, right. it's better for everybody. But my mission was to make sure that the products are actually working because this, okay. we're in the beauty industry and we right. want to make sure that customers their skin is be more beautiful, more radiant, and healthier. Right. So all of those things we are testing with dermatologists in Germany to prove the efficacy. So right. it's not just wow. natural and better for you, but it's also effective. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, well, and it can be so difficult to find products that you can really trust. But I mean, yeah. it's amazing, your story. Lavido.com, right? That's where you can go to get these products. You yeah. can order them in the States, yeah. internationally. 48 hours, it's in your it's in And your they're home. all made, they're, yeah. I mean, they're produced all here. Made all, all made in Israel. Israel. All made in Israel. All natural, all made in Israel. And they all started being made in your kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Thank you so much right, for thank you guys. joining thank us. You very much. All right, now get this. An Israeli family received the surprise mm -hmm. of a lifetime this week. You've got to hear this. It's always exciting to receive a package in the mail, but Israeli journalist Nadav Bulstein just couldn't believe what he found when he opened up a delivery from Amazon with his young daughters. <laughs> That's right. Nadav had planned to surprise his little girls with electronic tablets. But when they found another gift, a pill bottle full of 42 grams of pot labeled for my husband with my love, he had some explaining to do. Nadav has already filed a complaint with the police who arrived at his home and confiscated the marijuana. But the circumstances of the unusual delivery are being investigated. And joining us now is Nadav Bonstein himself. Hello. Hello, Natasha. All right, so what was your reaction when you received this package? What did you tell your kids? Well, obviously, we were shocked. I mean, uh, I ordered these tablets on uh, Black Friday uh, like a month ago. Uh, it was for their birthday. I have uh, baby twin daughters and it arrived late. So they really wanted to open the box with me. We were, uh, me and my daughters and my mother-in-law together when we opened the box and it was sealed like nobody ever touched it. Like this strange pink jar, which I obviously didn't know for sure, but I had a good guess it's weed. 
and uh, I had a look at it and my mother-in-law she didn't know what it is she thought it's some something you plant like she's a gardener and uh, she, she I told her no I think it's 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 grass I think it's weird and she said uh, oh my god oh my god somebody's framing us somebody's <laughs> framing you where are the police she got really excited about it and um, the funny thing is that I didn't want to leave it at home so I took it with me when I went to work and while I was driving, I was thinking, oh my God, if a policeman will stop me and see it, who would, on earth would believe that I got it on, from Amazon with my kids' uh, tablets? Uh, all right, well, so were you worried that you would get in trouble? Like, how did the police react to well, all this? Well, um, I didn't think I'd get in trouble because I'm really like a super nerd. I never smoked uh, weed in my life, so... I, I knew nobody would believe that I ordered it, um, but obviously I called police. They were really surprised, but then um, a policeman came to our house, he took it, uh, he labeled it, and, and they said they're standing, starting an investigation about it. Have you gotten a response from Amazon? Well, I don't know if you ever tried it, Natasha, but uh, speaking with somebody from Amazon, it's harder than, I don't know, than... Uh, uh, anything. I mean, I can't get to a human representative. I sent emails. They all are uh, returning. They returned the email back to me like with no response. So, uh, not yet. I haven't spoke with with anybody from Amazon. All right. How crazy! What a crazy <laughs> story. Uh, That's insane. But all right. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> All right, now it's time to learn about some must-see places to visit here in the Holy Land. And many of these places Israelis don't even know about. That's right. They're brought to you by Visit to Israel, one of the world's leading Instagram pages about how to travel in Israel. And here with this week's rundown is Emmanuel Kadosh. Hey guys, all right, so first spot that anyone should make sure to go visit is Mount Tavol in the Lower Galilee region of Northern Israel. This is a very important biblical site from both the Old and New Testaments and can be found in both Jewish and Christian texts. Mount Tavol was significant in the period of the Second Temple as the site of settlement and battle. And for Christian, it's believed, Christian, sorry, it's believed to be the place of the transfiguration of Jesus, where he began to radiate light and spoke with Moses and Elijah. So it's a site where you can see many pilgrims come to from all around the world every year. And nowadays, it's a place to hang out, go for a nice hike, and actually a very cool site to go paragliding. Mount Tavol is actually 15 kilometers from the Sea of Galilee, so it's a good place to go visit if you're already heading to that part of the country. Yeah, and I would love to go paragliding. So that is yeah. that might it's be definitely the, the place to, to go. It. Yeah. All right, tell us more. All right, so the ecological park in Hode Sharon is the second site that everyone should go check out. It's the perfect place to go to on a sunny Saturday afternoon with the family. The park started off as a trash mountain and was oh. ecologically recycled into what we see today, mm -hmm. which is the largest ecological park in the country. You can also find a wide ecological lake which was water that was actually discharged from the municipal purification plant and then purified and restored into this lake. The park is home to a delicate ecosystem, bird watching site, and a picnic area for the whole family to enjoy. Wow. Uh, trash. I know. Uh, in you order to something in with the show that's fine. Yeah. Show Wasn't right. that kind of like Staten Island in, in the United States? <laughs> and, that's a good place. That's a good places, idea. places, I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Emmanuel, and giving us an update on these two places, both yeah, of which I've never visited myself, so... <laughs> We got to play up next on the list. Thank you. All right, let us take a look now at the weather forecast. Tonight should be cool and a little rainy with lows of about 47 or 9 degrees Celsius. And then tomorrow you can expect partly cloudy skies and a high of around 61 or 15 degrees Celsius. And now it's time for some tubing with ILTV. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty has a high cost, Natasha. <laughs> Beauty has a high cost. Is that not the best thing you've ever seen? Got, I mean, yeah, but the wax, the waxer is, I think, enjoying this a little He's too much. He's loving it. This is what happens when you go waxing, my friends. You see what all I the guess. women have to go through? I guess so. I mean, now that guy had a taste of what real life is like. I'm sure, yes. And we are so glad that we could share it with the public. Yeah, Thank you guys for watching that with us. It. But that's it for today's <laughs> news. Today's exchange rate is 3.45 shekels to the American dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube. 
I'm Aaron Porras. And I'm Natasha Kierczak. Thanks for watching.